Greetings from Southern Yankee Homestead. This is your first time, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Uh, today we're gonna to be continuing the uh, finalization of the goat fence, or semi-finalization. Uh, we're gonna get the first chunk of wire hung, which is gonna be interesting to say the least, uh, because the wire is heavy, if you didn't know. We're using a uh, red brand uh, goat fence. Sorry, tree. Um, using red brand goat fence uh, it's a uh, I don't know what type of wire it's you know circled and got little squares on it it's the stuff you buy at your local tractor box store uh, probably made in China maybe not I don't know it works or has been working so far so we're gonna go ahead and uh, grab that which we're gonna use the tractor for because I ain't hoisting that 200 plus pound roll over my shoulder and hauling it around the homestead. So, um, what else is there? This is nothing other than let me get you set up on the tractor and we'll see where we go from here.
All right, what you just saw me do, let me get this straightened up a little. I took out a couple of links on the top and a couple of links on the bottom. I took out one extra link on the bottom because when this swings around, I'm gonna to have to clear the H brace wire. So these verticals will interfere on the back side. As far as our stretcher goes, couldn't be simpler. This is just a uh, couple one by fours, or a one by four cut down to a little bit longer than the fence. I cross drilled it and put some grade two hardware in there. Nothing fancy. Didn't feel like spending a hundred and something dollars for a fence stretcher for the little amount of fence that we're doing here. I also want to take this opportunity to say that Obviously, I'm not a professional. I'm someone that is knowledgeable, but not, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't do this professionally. I do this one, to save money, two, to learn something. Mostly to save money. I don't know what this fence would have cost if I hired someone to do it. But I can tell you, as of right now, for the entire perimeter, we have somewhere in the neighborhood of $1,000 or $1,200, and that's using free poles and free rebar. A lot of that cost is T-post, T-post clips, uh, and the, f the fencing, the wiring, and the um, tensioners for the wiring. Ooh, might have to drill a new board. Nope, we got it off, we're good. What you're asking yourself why would we use the can am a snatch block and the winch to tension the fence i don't own a come along i'm not going to use a ratchet strap and this works perfectly okay uh, the reason i had to use a snatch block is because i didn't have room over there to get the uh, right angle if i pulled from where i'm at the fence would pull away from the post so by going this way, it gives me a more direct line so I can get the fence tighter when I wrap it around the post. Um, other than that, uh, the other thing, 
the hook down there, I turn it so it's away from the fence. If it's turned in towards the fence, it might uh, bind up or catch the fence itself, in which case you're not tensioning from this point. You'd be tensioning from wherever that catches. And naturally, for those of you that may not realize, I put the tractor back over there just to keep the post from pulling out some when I was putting strain on it. I don't think it would move. I'd rather just make sure it doesn't. One additional reason why I'm using the winch and the Can-Am to in the tractor to cinch this. Kind of different. I don't get the chance to use all that stuff together very often. So it's fun. Anyhow, uh, well, the battery died on the camera, so I just went ahead and continued uh, wearing this up. I basically looped every single one of them, strapping this around the post as tight as possible. Okay. So now I'm going to go through and put some uh, fencing staples on all of the uh, wire to help hold it and keep it from moving. Oh, and there's the new girl. Yes, it is a girl. She's actually coming over to say hello. I'll try to set you up so you can see her while I work. So 31 feet, I do 10, yeah, really, okay, go to 20, All right, to get a uh, oops, to get a somewhat even spacing, I went seven foot six on these. Now I'm going to pound in the uh, T post to help support it.
<laughs> All right, well, as you can tell, the sunlight's fading fast. Good possibility of rain tomorrow, but I'm saying that, and they were calling for rain Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and it keeps the day before getting pushed back. So originally, we we're supposed to have rain on Friday. This is Sunday. We're supposed to have rain Tuesday. As of last night, it might be Wednesday by now. We'll see. All right. Time to clean up and try to get the goats to calm down. <laughs> Good luck with that one. I already did a pre-check to make sure the uh, gate is going to fit between the posts. Uh, I'm going to hang this by myself. And I'm not going to get into which side faces out or hinges or whatnot. You can research all that. What I am going to show you is how I hang a level gate by myself and maybe need a little bit of um, further alignment, but it'll be level from the get-go using a level. So first step I want to do, I want to get some measurements. So right now to the bottom of my hinge is four inches. I want to be probably eight to the bottom of my hinge. So that's where I'm going to draw, drill my first hole. I'm not going to drill my second one until I have the first pin in for the hinge. So eight inches. Uh, pressure treated pine, gonna love it. The second part, you're gonna need your hinge bolt and a BFR, or BFW. You're gonna need a BFW and, a, uh, and your hinge bolt. Uh, BFW is big friendly wrench. Hopefully half inch drill bit is big enough for this. So we're just gonna go ahead and get our bolt started. I probably should use a bigger, but the bolt started, this is where the wrench comes in. And you can use a uh, box end wrench or crescent or whatever you got. You just want to be able to slip over the pin and be able to spin it. Now, for now, I'm not going to go all the way in. But I'm going to leave the hinge perpendicular to the ground. Then I'm going to get my second measurement. So we know from the bottom of the hinge, it's eight inches, and we want to be 34 to that hinge. Now, to get it straight, we're going to go with our level. We're going to get to level, and then we're just going to make a mark. It's visible. And we know from the bottom of our hinge, we want it, what was it, 34? 34 to the bottom of the next hinge. So we just go right to our bolt, go up to 34. And that's where we're gonna put our second pin. All right, what I did was I counted the threads on the bottom, counted the threads on the top. That's gonna to give me a starting reference. So now we're gonna put our level on each of the hinges and I can tell, I can tell the top one needs to come back out or the bottom one needs to go in. What we're going to do is we're going to screw the bottom one in first. Just because of the gap that I have, I want to take the bottom in just a little bit. So we're going to give her one full turn. Actually, we're going to go a half turn. See what that does. We 
still need to come in quite a bit more. So we're going to complete the turn. And then back this one out a half a turn. Yeah, we'll go a full turn. And we are pretty well on the money right there. You know, up on this one. We're going to go down on this one. Now, let me switch my hinges and we'll be right back. Maybe a hair off, but it stays when you let it go. So, as far as I'm concerned, that's about as level as you can get it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to tighten up that that uh, fence or tighten up the uh, hinge so that it doesn't move, and then I just got to put a uh, latch on it. We do have a light breeze coming through. Realistically, what I could have done also is possibly um, flip the hinge the other way around so that you could just set it on there. I just didn't want to do that. I wanted to have it a little more secure. I don't want to run the risk of the goats getting frisky and knocking the fence off the gate. Knocking the fence off the gate. That's stupid. Knocking the gate off the fence. There we go. That's better. All right. Count me lazy or simple. I'm just going to use some big fencing uh, staples to hold this chain on to keep the gate closed. Ta da! So, I guess the last thing is to. Uh, Go ahead and pull down this construction netting because as of right now this stretch of fence is done um, this will be the final uh, one on the goat fence for a while i know i had a more simple one earlier and this is the second part but you may be wondering though goat fence is done but yet there's the other post and we're going to have a large gap here well, there are plans for this area. Say, I'm not going to tell you what those plans are because I want you to subscribe. I want you to follow us. I want you to watch and see what we end up doing in this area. Any ideas? Leave comments down below. All right. Well, we're all set up. 14 minutes left on this memory chip. I guess I got it done just in time. So there's a welded wire fence that's not very good. It's crappy fence here. Then I got the electrical wires hung, but I don't have the electrical wires plugged in. Uh, the electric fence will plug in if needed, but it's already set up and ready to go. Then as we come down through here, you see the H braces all set up. One of our new chickens, a tree. And then uh, on these, I just wrapped them around like I was supposed to do on the other ones. I twisted them up and made them real tight. So I wanted to see if there's a difference. But I mean, the fence is 
pretty good. We put the caps on the T-posts. I know a lot of people don't do that, but we want to do it right, keep the posts from rusting, and any sharp edges off the top. And uh, down through here, we got our second H brace. There's our new goat, the loud one, or the brown one. Then uh, little man has his head in the bucket. Of course, snow is not being nice to the new goat. And lie now. Where is the missing a goat? Where's Justine? Or not Justine. The missing a goat. Where's uh, Frosty? Frosty, go for a walk, little man. Anyhow, brought in some dirt to fill in the gap that was there. Then it rained, made it nice and muddy. Now we get the fence in, we can go ahead and start looking at getting uh, getting the barn set up in its final position. That's not its final position. Yeah, really? But, we'll go ahead and let's see. We do have a little wave on the other side of the gate. And I didn't get my post quite straight all the way down. But, I don't think that's too bad for a redneck with a little bit of time. And that's what this goat does all day long. Nah! 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 <laughs> all right. So, I guess we'll uh, end this video here. We've got a, enough footage to finish this up, I'm sure, and then some. So, hope you enjoyed the episode. Hit that thumbs up button, which is the like. Go down and hit the uh, subscribe button if you haven't subscribed before. Hit the bell icon so that you can be notified when new videos come out. Uh, share. Help spread it around. Like, share, subscribe. I don't know what else there is, so we'll just say... Have a good day, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. All right, well, I'll start off by apologizing if there's noise. We got a new goat, so it's not acclimated yet, so it's just going, nah!